Tonight, a Target 12 investigator's exclusive, 38 studios behind closed doors. With taxpayers facing a $90 million bill for the 38 Studios disaster, we decided to find out, did insiders at such a powerful company play by their own rules? And tonight, we can tell you our findings have already prompted action. A top state official is finally launching an investigation. Let's get right to Target 12 investigator Tim White for the exclusive details. Target 12 unearthed this document and it raises serious questions. Why is it 38 Studios never disclosed it was lobbying the state for your money? And why is it no one ever did anything about it? Few companies have affected Rhode Island government like 38 Studios. Yes or no, was policy affected at the state level by 38 Studios? Yes. Nearly all companies that interact with public officials to affect state policy have to register someone as a lobbyist. The goal is to keep things above board. But when Target 12 combed the state's database of lobbying records, we found not a single person ever registered to lobby on behalf of 38 Studios. If there had been more transparency, if you had known that 75 million would have gone there, uh, would it have given you pause? Absolutely. State Representative Charlene Lima is a harsh critic of the entire 38 Studios deal. If they did have lobbyists here, at least the rank and file who were totally blindsided by this $75 million special interest piece of legislation would have known what they were lobbying for. It appears to be a classic case of a Rhode Island who you know. A friend of then House Speaker Gordon Fox, attorney Michael Corso, got a private meeting with top state officials to push the 38 Studios deal at this Providence law office. I sat in a meeting with them. Listen for yourself. This is the former speaker on Newsmakers in 2012 describing a meeting he had just before the company came to Rhode Island. The Her meeting then took place at Mike Corso's office because he volunteered his office. Then when the company was in its death throes, another secret meeting with 38 Studios officials, this time with Fox, Governor Lincoln Chafee, and their top aides. Slide two papers, it's Kurt Schilling with Tom Zaccanino, the four of us, and the governors and I are like, what in the hell? The company, Fox says, was asking the state for tax credits and a bridge loan. We went to the state official who polices lobbyists. None of these people ever registered to lobby. In wanting to know why the state never launched an investigation into those 38 studios meetings. So in other words, I couldn't go on a witch hunt. Initially, Secretary of State Ralph Mollis defended the lack of action. Why not check it out? Why not find out why someone didn't register as a lobbyist? Because we'd have to find out who to look for first. I mean, I don't know who was lobbying for 38 Studios. But my question is, could you even have looked into it to see if that were the case? Other than, you know, I guess, you, could I have written Kurt Schilling, written Governor Kachiri, um, written the General Assembly members and asked, please advise if anyone had ever lobbied you for 38 Studios. Sure, why not? Be an interesting letter. Then we showed Mollis this document obtained by Target 12. It's a contract. Attorney Michael Corso, that friend of Gordon Fox, signed with 38 Studios. Dated January 2011, the company promised to pay Corso $300,000 a year to, among many duties, have interactions with government agencies and various public officials. Does that scream to you that he should have registered as a lobbyist? Yes. We've reached out to Michael Corso many times since the collapse of 38 Studios, and he has never returned our calls. Now, 24 hours after my interview with Mollis, he reached out to us again, letting us know they are now launching an investigation into possible lobbying violations with 38 Studios. Why the change of heart? Change of heart is as a result of our discussion, as a result of your investigation, to be perfectly clear. Mala says after a closer reading of the law, he has decided to scrutinize interactions 38 Studios officials had with both the legislative and executive branch of Rhode Island government. And as they say, upon further review, um, I think that we have an obligation and responsibility to look into this, find out if anyone did not file while lobbying, have some hearings potentially. Mala says if he finds a violation of the state's lobbying laws, he can levy fines and pass along his findings to the attorney general's office to potentially pursue 
criminal charges. With the Target 12 investigators, Tim White, Eyewitness News. This Target 12 investigators exclusive 38 studios behind closed doors continues tomorrow morning on Eyewitness News this morning. We'll break down the next steps in this investigation and bring you more fallout from our findings. And right now on our website, you can read for yourself the document that Tim White obtained from a 38 Studios insider that helped sparked a state investigation into the scandal. It's online right now at WPRI.com.